P four C N T V and we gonna hear Rifka. Rifka's testimony yes. right quick. And um well tell, a, wait, tell us how old you are, Rifka. I'm sixteen, love Jesus. <laughs> and yeah, um crazy how I found the Lord, but um can we were to blown away. But my parents are actually Muslim. They're radical radical Muslims. And and, and um if you guys don't know what the history of Islam is, it's really hostile towards Christianity. And just the mere word Christianity brings such a hatred in them, right? And uh, I'm, I'm actually a secret Christian. I've been in hiding, I guess, for a long time, three, four years. Um, they can't know of my faith because if they do know, the consequences are really harsh. Um, just the culture and background that they come from like, is, is just so hostile towards Christianity. Just they cannot believe, like, they will pretty much disown me. I don't know what else would happen, but the consequences are great. But uh, crazy how I found the Lord is um, when I was about a couple years back, God really, I never, I was abused, and um, I never really knew that I could pray. And I always thought it was Christians that can pray. And Christians are, in my mind, hereditary. That if your parents are Christian, you're Christian. I had no knowledge of God. I had no knowledge of who Jesus was. You know, so often, so many people know this Jesus. I thought it was just some random guy that... Just, just always depicted with a cross and no idea what it meant. That he died for my sins and by the blood of the Lamb I am covered. Right. By it. And by the word of the testimony, by the blood of the Lamb, they conquered death. It has no sting. And I never knew that. And um, so one day I remember there's this girl that, that, that kept coming my way. And it would be even a park, even an hour away I saw her. And I was just like, who is she? Like, why? Everywhere I saw her, I was in the locker room, in the bathroom, in the lunchroom, in the, everywhere. And this guy just kept putting her in my way. And um, for some reason, I told her that I was a Christian just because, I guess, wanted to fit in, maybe. I don't know what it was. I guess just because I, I don't know what it was. I just said, yeah, sure, why not? You know, go with the flow. And um, mm-hmm. she got so excited. And she had just gotten saved and was really fire for God. And she was like, why don't you come to church with me? And this, for me, was huge. I was risking everything. Like, if my parents found out, I was 13 years old and I would not have a home. Like, how crazy. But you know what? I, I was done. I was done living my life for just worthless things, going on a path of just depravity, a path that, that I knew led, led to death. And um, so I went. And the minute I went in there, I hadn't even been into a church. Like, come on. Like, I was so amazed. And just, I love Jesus over around me. And just the passion that people had and the fire in their eyes really just, just set me back. And, and they started standing up and, and, and singing. And I'm like, why are they standing and singing? I didn't even know where church procedure went. And so they're singing, and then all of a sudden I just I start singing with them, and the words are up there, and I feel I just feel something different. So I continue. All of a sudden, the guy, the preacher, preaches his heart out, you know, about the gospel. And again, I see the fire and the passion, and I'm taken away. And then he says, you know, the biggest miracle of all is salvation. And so, and then he has an altar call, and. There's, I feel like there's something in that altar that depends on my life. And I'm scared. I'm like, I, I can't do this. Like, what am I doing? Like, this is so wrong. I'm not even supposed to be here. Like, this is crazy. But I go. I go. And just the well, Lord completely wraps me in his arms of love. And I break down on the floor. And I weep. And I'm like, I know. I just encountered love. Like, thinking back on it, I can remember. Just, I, I, I felt nothing but love. Nothing but this great radical love that just that said you are mine and and, and, I, and I didn't even know what sin was or ain't like you know like repentance what it meant but it was a couple months later that I truly like weep before the Lord and repented of my sins and and, and um, mourned over my life that that without God like I am destroyed there is no purpose of living without Jesus. Right. And so it was months later, but I truly gave my life to God. And ever since then, it's been the best journey, just falling at the foot of the cross again and again, and pouring my life as a drink offering, and seeing others just give their lives as well. And just a testimony is how God can complete And you know what the crazy thing is? For 150 generations, no one in my family has known Jesus. I'm the first one. Like, the wow. weakest of the link. I'm a, the littlest one. I'm 75 wow. pounds. I'm 4'11". Like, come on, Lord. Like, what were you thinking? <laughs> like, it's crazy. So, I mean, if you're listening to this, and, and I don't know if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know this love, I'm telling you, it's the best thing that can ever happen to you. And if there's that hole in your heart 
that, that, that yearns for something more. It cannot be filled with, with drinking or, or, or MTV or any of that stuff. Only Jesus can fill that hole in your heart. And I'm telling you, I'm one of millions that can attest to this great love. That, that oh man, man, just come to Jesus. And he will set you free, that you are no longer a slave unto sin, but a slave unto righteousness and holiness and purity and truth. That only in him will you find your purpose, that you were created for purpose. Like, why do you think I'm on fire? Like, for four years, I, I, I'm alive and well. It's through Jesus. It wasn't through any, any of my doing that I'm here safely, that I'm here at the house of prayer of all places. And, and the Lord would provide crazy ways. Like, I can give you testimony after testimony of how... God is, has saved me from, like, protected me, really, from when I had my Bible out and just how the Lord would blind their eyes or when I would be just worshiping and, and He would just deafen their ears to hearing my prayers that I've been crying in and day out. First, to so just come to Jesus. He will set you free. He's the answer, the truth, the way, and the life. Yes. Absolutely. It's just me. One of millions! <laughs> so, yeah. But what, what would you say to the teenagers that are out All there? Right. That, that, that don't think that oh. it's possible to serve God when you're a teenager. Wow. What would you say okay. to them? You probably see so many of your friends giving themselves to, to, to just, just, just diabolical sin, right? Just wicked sins. But I am telling you, the Lord is raising up the Nazarites. You either choose to be a part of it or you yes. don't. Choose today who you will serve, either God or the devil. There is no lukewarm. He's raising up the generation that, that seek the face of God. So I'm telling you right now, it's one of so thousands he's raising up. And the young teenagers, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, you're seeing so many of your friends fall into sin, but I'm telling you, God is raising up the generation that's seeking after the heart of God, that wants heaven to fall on earth, and for the presence and glory of God to manifest here and now. So choose who you will yes. serve, because this is it. The revival is coming to America. So be a part of it, man. I, oh my goodness, it is so much more possible. I'm seeing revival just, just break out, like crying in. So God, so come, go to Jesus, man. He's raising up the Esthers and the Davids and the and the Jeremiahs. So be a part of it. It is possible, more than possible. Think of how much, how much more years you can give to God. So de de devote your teenagers to God. I'm telling you, it's oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Lord is raising up the generation to Amen. choose now. Amen.